Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Paul, Peter, it's another week. And uh, this week it's Western Kenya politics. And let, me, let me start with the obvious question, because we've had quite a few SMSs of people saying, hold on a minute, this is not the way we should be going. Why are we talking about regional blocks, you know, the whole tribal voting thing? Why are we doing this? Is it still relevant or are we moving away from those patterns? Paul, let me begin with you. Uh, so far, we cannot say we are moving away from those patterns. Those are the patterns that have been drawn uh, in all the elections that we have held. Uh, the possibility that it might change is, is unknown. It might just be a surprise. Uh, looking at the population that we have, a much younger population, it's only in this election that we are going to know whether we've been able to cut off from old habits or whether even the young generation have inherited all, all these old habits and are thinking more like, like their elders. Okay. But for now, you can't really tell whether we are going to cut a new path or we're going to go down the same road. Of course, let, yes. Let me say something. You know, that's an ideal situation. I would love a situation whereby mm -hmm. when you go to an elections, we look at issues and... Ideology we and... We don't look mm -hmm. at the regions. But even the constitution itself uh, prescribes a situation whereby somebody has to think about the regions where you will get your votes from. Okay. So that's why we, if somebody's contesting, they have to think about Western, they have to think about uh, Mount Kenya region, they have to think about coast, because you have to appeal to the entire country. So that's why, even at this particular level, Western Kenya is very important to discuss. Okay, okay, let's go into now the, 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 the detail and the meat of this. So quite a number of candidates. We've seen Alex's story there, his feature. What are your thoughts on the top? Who would you say are the top three? Let's begin there. I would say Mudabadi, mm -hmm. uh, possibly Eugene, and possibly Wetangula. And of course, Jirongo. And Jirongo as the top four. What we need to I note, asked for the top three. You see, it's already <laughs> getting tight. Here what we have to note <laughs> is that Eugene Wamalua is a lawyer, yes, but his constituency is in Rift Valley, is in Transoya County. Mm -hmm. So that's, you have to note that. But again, it's a unique constituency in the, sen in, in, in the sense that it votes with Western Kenya. It doesn't vote necessarily with Rift Valley. So mm -hmm. that's, that's important to note. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, what are your thoughts? Can they, the question we're asking today, of course, can they decide on one leader? And there's been a lot of pushing and pulling. There are a lot of rivalries going on here. Peter, can they decide on one person? No. A simple no. Uh, I think the issue of Luya unity in terms of voting is a mirage. It will never happen. As it is now, you notice what Jirongo did. He went to launch his candidature, so to speak, in Mudavadi's backyard. He's always fighting Mudavadi. Look at, look at uh, the, the other side, the Bungoma, the other area. You have Eugene Wamalua, and then you have uh, Moses Wetangula. Sort of, they will split the vote. Then you look at, look at Jironga himself, and if you look at all these guys, one thing is very clear, that the, the thing that strikes you is that they are more or less keen to be running mates, to be the brides for the real men who so will so run the, for the presidency next that's year. That's your sense of things. Yeah. Uh, Paul, Paul, what's your sense of things? And, and I think the history, there's a historical uh, phantom uh, that there never was a tribe called Luya. And, and this is a collection mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. who actually are different tribes and uh, who distinct have... Distinct languages. Very distinct languages, very distinct cultures, mm -hmm. who are politically banded together and called Luya. But when you go to the reality of it, they don't have the same viewpoint on anything. Uh, and, and this phantom called Luya Unity is the one that they have been pursuing all these years. And it can never come to be because when they now get to the cracks of it, they start realizing the differences between each other, between themselves. But hold on a minute. Isn't that in itself a wonderful thing that you have a variety that you get to choose from any of them? And even when other parts of the country are being told, choose one, that no, it would be a good thing for them to say, we're not going to choose one. We'd like a variety and, and make our choices, well, you know? It, it's a good thing, depending on where you're coming If you're not from. the politician, it, it's a good thing. It is a good thing for somebody who's looking for votes from the other regions. The other regions will be happy that the Western Kenya vote is being split. But for the people there, I don't think they really think that's a good thing. But uh, let's just move on a bit to discuss. Before you move on, mm -hmm. what's good for the people? is not necessarily good for the politicians, which we are seeing with all the top leaders in That's power right true. now in Kenya going through a But, a but terrible even for them, drought. it's not good for them because until they get to the reality of who they are and how they relate to each other, 
uh, every year and every election that comes up and they talk of lawyer unity and say we are going to have a single candidate but when the reality when the practicalities actually come they are not able to do it and uh, again the next election they tell themselves we are lawyers we can unite and they will never get anything done possibly if they accept their disunity and realize that we are different people now can we now have a common political front and now we meet together on a political platform rather than a regional and ethnic platform. But gentlemen, and perhaps this is where I'm taking this argument, which is a slightly different uh, uh, route, is um, common political front versus good leadership on the ground at county level. What should the Mwanainchi be focusing on? Should he be looking at this, this common ethnic alliance or should he be looking at what's our county plan? What do we want our government uh, structures on the ground promising us? Peter, let me come to you with that. Again, I'll repeat what I said initially. In an ideal situation, <laughs> we should not even be thinking about where somebody comes from right. because that should be relevant. Mm -hmm. What should be important is what this person stands for. But we don't live in an ideal world. These people come from somewhere. And the way our politic has, uh, politics has evolved over the years is that we think first about our local area, our local politics, before we think national. It's something that is not ideal. It's something that is not, I mean, it's something that is not good. But there's a reality that we live with. I think what we should think about now is to say, who are the good leaders from these regions and what do they stand for? That's the thing we should ask ourselves at this particular stage. That question now, who are the good leader? Who is the good leader? Name one. If you thought there was one that could really come through and be an amazing president for this country, Paul. Who, who I think in so far as we're talking about Western Kenya, I'll agree mm -hmm. with Peter that uh, none of them no, the is going to have a credible presidential bait. You're kidding. I'm forcing you to choose one out of the lot. We, we, you, you feel that they would be better in, in the, uh, as a running mate, that they most I think likely... They, they all know that the best they are going to do is be running mates. Okay, nevertheless, if one of them was running for the presidency, who would you say you would have the most confidence in? Um, Unfortunately, I don't think I would have no. in any of them, oh, in any yeah. of the five. Actually, it's Peter? true because we don't even know them. We don't know what they stand for. They're yet to, they're yet to come out to market themselves really as, 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 as presidential candidates. Okay. So at this particular stage, I would say also no that none of them really stands out. But I think we will be losing something if we don't discuss at least the three of the, 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 the aspirants. Mm -hmm. Look at Mudavadi, for example. Mm -hmm. what, what are his chances? The main thing you notice about Mudavadi is that he has been playing second fiddle to Raila Odinga throughout. Now he's coming out to say he will contest against Raila in the ODM primaries. Hopefully, he beats uh, Raila Odinga and becomes the ODM presidential candidate. Hopefully. But, but <laughs> what about he loses, which is a likely thing? What about if he loses? Mm -hmm. I tell you what, the, the grapevine in ODM is that this is what exactly Raila Odinga wants because that will give Raila Odinga a chance to drop Musalia Mudavadi as a running mate wow. and pick somebody else. Because as Alex's story told us, the concern is, is when you have Raila Odinga and Musalia Mudavadi, it's a Western thing. Mm -hmm. It's not appealing to the rest of the country. So what do you do to cure that? Probably you go and get a charity in Gilu to become a running mate to Raila Odinga. And that becomes a credible uh, uh, presidential team, team mm -hmm. than what it is at this particular okay. moment. I think Mudavadi has one problem. Throughout his entire political career, he's been a, always been a protege for somebody. From the moment he was elected the first time, he was a protege of Moy to the very end. Uh, then when Raila came in, Raila again became his political godfather. He has never gone out there and built an, an, a political base of his own. Even in his own uh, province, he's mm -hmm. been unable to bring the lawyers together into the lawyer unity. So uh, he would have to continue, I think, being a political protege. I do not see him having a presidential bid independent of Raila and independent of ODM. I don't think he can, he doesn't have the stomach Thank for it. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We end on that note. But do you agree? Do you disagree? It's your chance to have your say. We're asking you, do you think that Western Kenya leaders can decide on one presidential candidate for the region? Um, share your views with us, yes or no. Some people are saying they don't agree with the whole concept. Share your views on that as well. 2442 is there some number and of course we're going to give you the results at the close of the show right now we're going to take you to a break but so much more coming up on sunday live don't go away